Hi, welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by deletion mutations and insertion mutations. You should then be able to describe how these mutations can lead to a frame shift. And finally, you should be able to describe examples of other types of mutations. In the last video, we started looking at mutations, and if you haven't watched that video, you should watch it now. We saw that a small scale change to the DNA in a gene is called a gene mutation. And if a gene mutation involves a single nucleotide, then that's called a point mutation. There are three types of gene mutation that you need to know. In a substitution mutation, one nucleotide is substituted by a different nucleotide, and the effect of this on the protein encoded depends on the substitution. For example, in this substitution, the amino acid sequence of the protein does not change. That's because the genetic code is degenerate. In other words, several different codons can code for the same amino acid. So this mutation will have no effect on the phenotype of an organism. Scientists call mutations like this a silent mutation. Here's a different substitution mutation. However, this substitution mutation does produce a change in the amino acid sequence. So this mutation could cause a change in the organism's phenotype. This could produce a negative effect on the organism. For example, it might prevent an enzyme from functioning effectively. A substitution mutation could produce a positive effect, although this is much less likely. For example, it may produce an enzyme which catalyzes the reaction more effectively than the original enzyme. Now, if this substitution mutation produces a stop codon, then this will trigger translation to stop, and this shortened protein is highly unlikely to work effectively, possibly having a significant negative effect on the organism. Now, as well as substitution mutations, there are two other types of point mutations. These are called deletion mutations and insertion mutations. In a deletion mutation, a nucleotide is deleted, and in an insertion mutation, a nucleotide is inserted. Both deletion mutations and insertion mutations can have massive effects on the protein encoded by a gene. Remember that each amino acid is encoded by a triplet of DNA bases, and these triplets are called codons. And remember that codons do not overlap. The reading frame is how the codons are read. Deleting a single nucleotide shifts the reading frame by one. This changes the codon and every codon that follows. I'm showing you that here. In this case, we've deleted the first G in the second codon, which I'm showing in green. This has changed both the second codon and every codon that follows. And as you can see, this has changed all of the affected amino acids. Scientists call mutations like this a frame shift mutation. And frame shift mutations have dramatic effects on the encoded protein. As I said, a frame shift mutation changes the codon and every codon that follows. So potentially, hundreds of amino acids in a protein can be changed. Now, we also produce a frame shift mutation if we insert a single nucleotide like this. Again, this insertion mutation has affected both the mutated codon and every codon that follows, and we can see the dramatic effect on the amino acids encoded. So both deletion mutations and insertion mutations can result in a frame shift mutation. Now, a frame shift mutation near the end of a gene will affect fewer amino acids than a frame shift mutation near the start. However, any frame shift mutation could produce a non-functional protein and this could affect the phenotype of the organism. Okay, I'm showing you here a deletion mutation which has deleted a whole codon. As a result of this mutation, one amino acid will be deleted from the protein. In this case, because three nucleotides were deleted, the reading frame is not affected, so the effect on the protein could be relatively small. Inserting a triplet of nucleotides also does not change the reading frame. And again, this might have a relatively small effect on the encoded protein. Now, there are two other types of mutations that you need to know. In a duplication mutation, one or several nucleotides are duplicated. And I'm showing an example here. In this case, a T in the third codon has duplicated. Now, in this example, we've created a frame shift, changing both the affected codon and all the codons after. However, in this example, we've duplicated an entire codon. Because three nucleotides have been duplicated, this mutation does not cause a frame shift. Okay, now in an inversion mutation, a group of nucleotides separate and then reattach in the same position, but in a reverse order. 
and we can see that in this example, in which the fourth codon has inverted. In the case of an inversion mutation, any inverted codons are affected. So in this case, the fourth codon now codes for threonine, not alanine. However, because the number of nucleotides has not changed, an inversion mutation does not produce a frame shift. Now, all of the mutations we've looked at so far are examples of gene mutations. That's because they are relatively small scale changes to the nucleotides in a gene. However, larger scale mutations can also take place. These can affect chromosomes or the numbers of chromosomes. And scientists call these chromosome mutations. Now, just like with genes, whole sections of chromosomes can undergo deletion, duplication, or inversion. We can also see chromosomal translocation. In translocation, part of one chromosome breaks away and then joins to a different chromosome. Now, chromosomal translocations can have a major effect on an organism's phenotype. This can include developmental issues, reduced fertility, and an increased risk of cancer. In the next video, we'll start looking at how gene expression is regulated.